Hello, welcome back to the channel. My name is Matt, and this here is my 1950 Cat D4, which is way too shiny and nice right now. I gotta get this thing started so I can scratch the heck out of it and get it all dirty. So to get this thing ready to go, basically it's just the fuel and the cooling system. You got the radiator ready to go, fuel tanks ready to go. There's just a lot of odds and ends here I need to clean up and paint. I'm not gonna show half this stuff. I mean, you've seen it all before. It's just gonna be wire wheeling it priming it and painting it, but we've got the cooling fan, some fuel lines, parking brake bracket. Other big ticket items are these fenders. These things have been out here for so long blocking this path. I'm gonna be really happy to have them out of here, but they're quite heavy there. This is like three eighths. Get the camera shadow out of there. So these, these weigh about, I don't know, maybe a hundred pounds, maybe a little less. And then on this one, that's the winch brake, hydraulic control. I'll pull these off and clean them up separately. It's heavy. Uh, come on. Uh, oh. Turns out these new bolts I got are the head is one sixteenth larger than the original bolts, and which is just fine for this one and the one underneath. But on this one, there's just not enough space to get a socket on there. So I reused the best bolt I could find and I just barely got it in there. It's very, very tight. Start prepping these fenders. Now, they welded on like a rebar toolbox, which I'll, I'll grind these down so it's smooth. Some more welding there. They cut that out with a torch, I'm assuming, to get the winch, to fit the winch. Not the best job, but uh, you know, everyone's gotta start from somewhere. Now, ooh, look at that spider egg. That is, that is large. You moving in there? is Charlie's balls. Yeah, this whole assembly's gonna need some work. And if you can make that out, I mean, this area is very, very pitted, but that's right where the brush guard's gonna go, so who cares? I did add hardener to this. And by the way, this hardener is isocyanite free. I know some people were worried I was gonna kill myself, but I, I wouldn't mess with that in the home shop. Um, it's pretty dangerous stuff. All right, I'm on the third and final coat here. Really not much to talk about except I've experimented with different rollers and the foam ones work the best. They leave bubbles, but the bubbles all go away with this paint at least. I've had issues with foam rollers on like using latex paint, but it works really well for this. I know they kind of seem smooth before, but man, once you get this gloss on here, you can see every imperfection, which I really do not care about. I mean, it's gonna get scratched up again anyway, but it's amazing. I mean, you can, I can see the shine on there. You can see how 
That's not orange peel, that's just every rusted out pitted spot on these things. But they still look actually pretty good and I think they're gonna fit kind of just the finish of everything else on this tractor. I'll just stick some threaded rod in front and back. Then I should just be able to slide it on and take the lift off. That was easy. The slide's also a little bit heavy. I wasn't expecting that, but. Coming down. Oh, oh, too far. There we go. If I can sneak it on here. At least these aren't frozen. I've always wondered how this, this, you could tighten it, but apparently this back flange is separate from this front flange. So I took those locks out and I should be able to rotate this back flange. If you open it up, that loosens it, obviously, and then you can tighten it up by closing it. But it looks pretty stuck. I'll try to knock it loose. If I break this pulley, I do have a backup, but let's try not to. Pretty tight. I broke the tip off my brand new bottle of penetrant here, but. Oh, oh it's turning, it turned. Not sure if you can see the setup. So I have this crescent wrench that's jammed in there and then the rounded edge is on this, this lock bolt. So that's gonna slip off at any moment, but it is turning. I think I just need to work it back and forth a few times uh, to get this thing loose. So this fan blade is not your average automotive fan blade. It's pretty thick. So maybe I can get this on here and use that for leverage. I just need to work it back and forth. I think it'll free up. Oh, well maybe I should just pull this whole thing off. Yeah, it's probably best that I did this. Shoot, this thing looks brand new in here. I'm seeing a spring stick out right here. That's not usually a good sign on a seal. So, yeah, oh man, this thing looks shot. All right, I was just reading through the uh, engine manual. This is a ring. I thought this was an O-ring, but it's just a snap ring. Oh. So there's a seal here, there's the bearing. Yeah, I mean, the seal is shot out. You can see this pumps grease through the shaft. We'll see actually if that works or not. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, there it goes. So I don't know if that's because the, the seal was bad or what, but I was pumping for about two minutes to get that to come out. All right, here's the plan on this thing. So you can see this bearing right here. There's actually two bearings. There's one here and then there's one about right here. And that's what the shaft rides on. These bearings are easily replaceable. Well, not they're not easy to replace, but they're easy to find. 
but I think both of these bearings are good. There's no shaft play. They don't, they're not grinding when I turn them. So I'll leave those be. Um, I will replace the seal. I found one for $5. There's actually another seal right here behind the other bearing. Um, but if that seal's bad, there's actually, there's a wheat pole down here, which is full of dried or dirt or something. And if the seal for the water pump impeller, which is right here, if that's bad, or if this grease fitting is bad, it's gonna puke it out of here. So there's no evidence of any of that happening. So I think we're okay in here. And like I said, this, this seal was bad, I'll replace that. Worst case scenario is this water pump leaks and I can easily swap it out with everything all installed. So it's just not worth it to take apart right now. I have a really good feeling it's actually gonna be fine except for that seal. I can't get the tip out of here. I mean, I, and I can't throw this thing away. It's like a full bottle. I'm sure this will work fine. You know, I think part of the problem is if you look in here, there's a slit and when you tighten this nut all the way down or the screw all the way down, you can actually see it's clamped right there. And I tried to straighten it out, but I'm guessing it's just not perfectly straight. So the thread, oh yeah, you can see it right there. You get the light on there. It curves in right there. That's the problem. And yeah, now that the threads are clean, it hangs up right when it gets to that. Well, still not that hard. Now this new seal is a little thinner than the other one, but I think it'll be fine. So there's actually a hole in the bottom, which pushes to, oh, yeah, there it goes right in there. So that holds this in place, that's the preload. Unfortunately, when I took the snap ring off, it has a little, it's supposed to have a little notch up that goes in that hole and it broke off, so. sure how tight to get this. This fan belt, here's the original fan belt and it's significantly thinner than the new one. I think this will still work, but the issue I'm seeing is the back of that pulley is actually touching the housing there, which probably not good because that's, it's, it's so wide to accommodate that pulley. Alignment looks okay. You're only supposed to have one inch of slack. So, I mean, we're about there already. Well, it ain't rubbing now. It's just way back. If you look back here, like before I could see the threads coming out, but there's probably an eighth of an inch before the threads even are underneath this thing. 
we're man that's a tight belt that might loosen up though once it gets going it ain't rubbing it's locking let's make sure i can't loosen this all right call that tight man this thing spins nice look at this the threads are really bad on this thing Okay, this is the front PTO shaft. I still have not gotten the O-ring that goes right here. It should be in the mail. Anyway, so I think these had like an angled grease fitting on them. Now this whole thing on the outside is a seal. It's a cat only. It's made by National, but it's cat only. Uh, I could not find it anywhere. Fortunately, it's in pretty decent condition. So I'm just gonna put some grease on it and let it go. It is just a grease seal. It's not like an oil seal. So these two uh, lubricate in here. This one lubricates, I think this is the shaft where it goes into the hydraulic pump. So that, that channel comes up through here. Oh, now I can't even push that back anymore. So we might actually grab out there. Oh yeah, it's coming out. Don't want to overdo it. So we'll leave it right there. That's perfect. Probably too much actually. I'm sure this bent shaft is bugging some of you, but I'm not going to bend this back until it's all hooked up. All right, so I'm doing the, the fuel tank here. This is, I think this is how it was originally. There's these two spacers. I'm sure this is not stock, but the point of these spacers, I think, is to clear the winch control. And I just got tape holding these studs in right now. This is the drain, this is the feed. I don't remember which goes where. Oh yeah, that's probably the right one. A lot of this stuff is compression or flare fitting, and uh, that's fine, but for the NPT stuff, which there's a few fittings, you don't wanna use Teflon tape, obviously, so I'm just gonna use Permatex 2 again. Good. I remember a headroom being an issue before hitting the garage door. We'll see how it works. Not gonna be high enough though. Whoa.
All right, just ease her down. Got to make sure everyone knows this thing was patented in Mexico and Chile, so that's why I didn't paint over this. She's in. Did I put... I think I put this on backwards. I think this needs to be flipped around. Yes, that's definitely got to be what it is. The good news is that I think I can do this without removing anything. I just need to take these bolts off and flip it around. How did I miss that before? Dang it. Still pretty locked up. It's pretty rusted. All right, let me get my other wrench out. So this one had a nut on it. These two both have nuts on them. And I cut the nut off here, so that should pop out. But the other side did not have nuts. So I'm thinking this is probably originally threaded. And then they, um, they had to put nuts on it when it rusted out. Try a one half inch. Oh, that just busted that right off. No damage to that. Ooh, oh, that's a gasket. I, thought, I saw a crack right there, but that's a gasket. So since these are stripped out, I think I might just drill a hole in here with my torch and then re-thread everything. All right, it might look like I had gouged into the flange when I, with the torch, but that was just the gasket that I was cutting into. So I've cleaned this up now. You can see it's just pitted, but there's no gouges from the torch. Anyways, I did get a new gasket. This is uh, aluminum with a rubber in the, in the middle, but it's aluminum on both sides. Uh, I'm not sure how it's gonna do with this all this rust pitting. Well, I guess we'll find out. Studs are cleaning up pretty nice. I'm gonna to try to salvage them. All right guys, so if you remember in the last video when I pressure washed, or was that two videos ago? I don't even know. When I pressure washed these, uh, water got in through these holes and up into the valve cover. So that tells me that these holes are obviously not blind and this is a coarse stud. So I, I, I'm afraid oil is gonna come leaking out of here and to, uh, I got Permatex 2. I think Permatex 3 would also work, but I'm gonna seal these threads before I thread them in here.
Okay, here's the exhaust manifold. It's, I mean, it's, it's rough. Looking, you can see how it's, this is not, I mean, this has just been rusted and pitted all the heck. I don't see any holes in it anywhere. Okay, product I'm using is slip plate and it's basically graphite. Um, so it's, this is a little bit of a trick, but graphite holds up to heat really well. I've done it before on a manifold, but never one that's this bumpy. So we'll see how it turns out. Typically though, you spray it on and then you rub it to kind of shine it up a little bit. But it goes on like paint. So I can show you on the only smooth part on this entire thing. Once it's dried for about 10 minutes and you just kind of come in here and you light, you lightly rub and it just kind of shines it up and makes it look a lot nicer. I don't think I'm going to do that though, since this is so rough. Okay, we got problems. So up here, this is fine. This will line up perfectly. I just, you know, need to get that in. But on the pipe down below, there's a huge gap there. I mean, this is, this is flush. So that should be flush there. Um, I got the other pipe off the other engine, the original engine, and just holding it up, I can tell you this one sticks way further forward. It, it would fit. I'm pretty sure what's happened is this thing has gotten bent back just from storage and getting moved around. It's just, in my opinion, it's way too risky to try to bend it back forward when it's connected. I, I mean, I'll tell you right now, I, you run the risk of breaking this. This is a really thin casting right here. I just don't want to do it. So I'm going to have to take the radiator back off, pull this pipe and replace it with a new one. I'm going to have to clean this one out. This one's really nasty on the inside, but <clears throat> I mean, this is not the time to be lazy. Just let that RTV cure on there, it peels off a lot easier. So something happened here. This one is all caved in right here. It's, it's clearly different. Okay, well that only cost a day. Um, I only got one coat of paint on here, but once it's on, I can kind of brush on another quick one. Oh, I'm waiting for the RTV to set up before I torque it. Okay, I got fresh RTV. I remembered my hose clamps this time. I think we're good to go. Snugged up there and there. Now that's nice and flush. So we're, we're golden there. The color match between these is actually really good, but this thing is so dirty. It looks faded almost. So these hose clamps have a nylon nut on them. So they're mostly vibration proof. I was looking through the parts diagram. Originally, this was, I think, a solid piece, but you can tell this thing's been welded on. All 
I left the bolts on this side loose because there's this overflow, which is broken, but it's supposed to go in like this, and then it clamps with those clamps to these bolts. Somehow, I don't know how this happened. Look how flattened that is. I'm not sure. Okay, we got a leak coming out of this plate right here. And uh, so I, I, if you've watched this channel, I made this plate a long time ago. And so, and, and I didn't use RTV, I just used a normal gasket. So most likely you can see, I don't know, hopefully you can see that the surface is kind of not smooth at all. The really good news though, is that there does not appear to be a leak between the engine block and this bell housing. So there is a port that goes through and that, that's where the water's coming up out of here. This is for the pony motor. So I'm really happy about that because that would be, that would be it completely taking everything apart again, basically. Now let's deal with the clutch here. There's a few adjustments I need to make, probably. Whoa, I feel high up. This is a big machine now that I'm sitting on it. There's three issues here that I need to fix. So the first is I don't like the position of where this lever is. So I'll kind of show it against my leg. Um, so when the actual, the clutch is, is in and it's in gear, it's gonna be right there, which is a little bit uncomfortable. I got long legs. That's why I kinda, I, I figured it as much. So I'm gonna go ahead and thread this in a little bit. Second issue is the interlock is not engaging. And I know the interlock works, so I think there's that other threaded rod in there that I'm gonna have to adjust. I think that's to fix the interlock. So I'll probably start with that and then I'll switch over to this and make sure this doesn't shift around. And then the third thing is the actual clutch itself. I think I might wanna tighten it in a little bit. I mean, the manual just says it should be reasonably hard to, to engage it. It does snap, but so we'll, I'll adjust that a little bit. And I guess to do that on this older machine, there's an inspection cover on the bottom that you have to get to. On the newer machines, apparently you can do it from the top, according to the manual. One other small issue I found, uh, to get like, I had the floor plate on over here just to test everything out. I can't get it on here with this stud. And so I remember that this was a bolt and this was a stud and that's the reason why. Okay, so when I let the clutch out and engage it, this is the interlock shaft. So I want that to come out more, which means I think I want to thread this in so that this is in more when it starts to run up. Does that make sense? What are we doing? Are we threading this in? I think so. Okay, let's try that. Nope, still not working. Okay, I got the interlock working. So basically I had a, to screw that stud in almost all the way. You can see how little play is left, which makes sense because it's a brand new, the brand new clutch and brand new pressure plate. So it's like a completely new in there. So it's in, it's engaged right now. Can't get into gear. Yeah, I'm getting in reverse there. Can't get out of gear, so interlock's good. So the clutch is disengaged right now. I'm just gonna tighten it, tighten up this little spider gear. Give it that, see if that works. Yeah, that's too much. I'll try that. That's pretty hard there. That's probably too hard. I'm gonna have to adjust this again, I think, once it's worn in a little bit. I have no idea. It just says reasonably hard in the manual, so. So the nuts to adjust it are right there. I'm gonna see if I can sneak a tool in there and tighten it up without having to crawl underneath this thing again. Just tightening that nut. I got it, uh oh. There goes my box wrench. Really glad I'm doing this adjustment last because now that the clutch is engaged, it's basically gonna shoot right in my crotch there. So I'm gonna take pretty much all that slack out and hopefully this thing works out. All right, I got adjusted way in, not all the way, but pretty close. And I kind of like this. So right now the clutch is disengaged. It's, I'm like leaning back on the seat right now. So it's close to my hand. I'm not sure how this will work out, but when I engage it, 
it's right there at my knee. Uh, so, and, and there's, there's like leg room over here. So I think that's going to be okay. I don't know. I've never operated one of these before. So, but I think, I think that's going to work for me. So I'm about, uh, I'm almost six, four. And so there's actually a fair amount of adjustment in there. So I'll go ahead and put the grease on. This just gives it a nice little seal. The other side of this gasket has Permatex 3 on it. I'm also going to put a tiny bit of anti-seize on this stud side so it uh, just comes out easier. Just leave that hand tight for now since I am going to have to take it out when I uh, put the floor plate in. So when I took this apart the um, original bolts were stuck in there and ripped the inserts out of the seat so just use some anti-seize just cross more stuff off the list here so I, I kind of cleaned this out before but I'm missing there's supposed to be a seal around here this is supposed to seal the gas and then this is like a, a breather for did I say gas I meant diesel I think it's nitrile it smells like it it's pretty thick it should work Use my old friend here to stick it into place. All right, it ain't pretty, but uh, should at least seal the tank. Let's give it a shot here. I think this is going to be so thick that it's not going to line. Still, the letters aren't going to line up. That's okay though. Yeah, see, it's so thick it should turn all the way so. The letters are facing that way. It's not a big deal, whatever. At least it's sealed. I'm gonna leave it on here and let that uh, Permatex 3 harden up for a while. Okay, a little bit of bad news here. So I uh, came back and resealed this with RTV and it's holding steady. The whole system's full of water. Uh, you can see the radiator's pretty full. And I did have some initial issues with like this hose leaking, so I just tightened those clamps down. But then I noticed, I heard some dripping. <laughs> And I, I put my finger right here, and yeah, it's leaking. So there's a weep hole right there where grease is supposed to come out. But also, if the, if the seal in the water pump's bad, it'll leak out of there. Originally, there was a, a ton of hard grease that was in there that I kind of dug out. So I'm thinking either that grease was holding it in, or it just this, this engine's been sitting for so long that the seal was shot, got dried out. The really good news, though, is the radiator is not leaking on any of these seams on either side. So that means it's, I, I did it okay. So it kind of stinks a little bit, but if this is the worst thing that happens, I will take it. I mean, this is super minor. I, I, can, I think you can remove this pump without having to take the radiator back off. Even if you do, it's only eight bolts, not a big deal. And the cost to rebuild it, I, I looked up the parts, it's like $35, $40, super cheap. So I'm just gonna sh shut the video down right there. And on the next video, I'll rebuild the water pump, finish running this fuel line, I already kind of got it started there and then throw some fluids in and it's ready to start. We're, getting, we're really close. So anyway, that's it for this video. I guess uh, you might have noticed this in the background, so maybe I'll just mention this really quick. All right, well, I just bought this piece of junk and I'm not really gonna film this. This isn't for me to work on, but uh, you'll see it probably in the background of some of the videos. So I figured I'd do a quick look at it. So my, uh, one of my nephews has for a while been bugging me to come out here and work on stuff. So 
I kind of got this as a starting spot for him. Got it for a few hundred bucks. It was kind of sitting in storage at an old bike shop that they, they weren't going to work on it. They were just trying to get rid of it. It's missing some parts. It's been kind of ripped up a little bit. I mean, not. it's mostly complete, but I have a feeling we're missing something right here. Some bungee cordage right there. Not sure what that's about. You know, figuring out that out is part of the, the challenge. So, but this actually is in pretty good condition for it's because it sat under cover. So like, you know, the seat, seat's in great condition. That kind of stuff adds up real fast. Maybe some wiring to, to figure out. Obviously gonna have to take apart the carb and clean that out, flush the fuel tank. Ooh, we got the tow special on there. Nice. So anyway, he'll, uh, he'll hopefully be working on that. We'll, I'll check in on this thing once in a while, you know, provide help as needed, but I think this is a good way to start. I mean, you basically, you have brakes, engine, transmission, suspension, it's all there, but it's all in a nice small package, easy to work on, not dangerous, you know, as dangerous as, you know, jacking up a car and working underneath that. This is a lot easier, safer. Oh, it's not four wheel drive, dang it. But I'm thinking I have a few hundred dollars in this and then, you know, he gets it running and driving and, and we flip it uh, monetarily, not literally. And then he used to make some money and then we can move on to something else if, he, if he's interested in it. But uh, it's, it's nice to make money on stuff when you're working on it, in my opinion. I mean, it's not bad. Is this, is this isn't JIS, is it? Oh, good. You know, at some point, Kawasaki switched over to like using the, those JIS. It's like, a, it looks like a Phillips, but it's not. And those are the most difficult fasteners to get out when they're rusty. So thankfully, this is a 95. It doesn't have any of those. Missing a lot of fasteners. That's fine. All right, so this week I made a community post and I said I'd give this connecting rod to whoever could name a picture of a tractor I put up that I'd been working next to. And some guy got it in like about five minutes and his name was Garden Tractor Fanatic. So clearly his name is, is earned. All right, PNWHB and that one right there that's upside down, that is the original cat. This must be rod number one. Let me see here. Yep, there's a one here too. So there you go, this is in the mail.